Dude, he's so big that people are calling me. My phone started ringing. Oh my god. Oh god, dude. He's pasty. Beautiful. Look at that. All right, it's my favorite time of the year. I finally get some off time to do something other than bass fishing. I got some like little housekeeping things that I got to take care of. First thing I got to do is pack my tackle up. This is all my salt water fishing gear right here. Z-Man has these little bait binders that I use to put, pretty much put all my plastics in. And I'm just gonna kind of rummage through here and pick a few things out that I think will catch fish. Three inch swim baits are probably a staple down there. Houdini is a good color. It's kind of gold looking. This is called a trick trout. It's a bait that I like to use. It's, it's kind of like a shad shaped lure. You see how it doesn't have much like there's no tail. I like a bait with a, a little boot tail on it, like when I get in more stained water, clearer water, or if I wanna keep the bait down deeper, I'll throw it like baits with a straight tail on it like this. You probably wouldn't believe it, but Ned Rig baits work really good for salt water. I really like to have pinks because the pinks look like shrimp baits. Probably the most important part. Lots of jig head, 3 16th ounce with a one or two aught hook. Maybe it's a two aught hook, a smaller hook, so it works really good with the three inch minnows. All right, secondly, it's quite a bit of a haul for me to get to the coastal parts of South Carolina. It's like four hours. So I like to make sure I got everything nice and tight on the boat and the trailer and the truck so I don't have any issues when I'm going to the coast, cause it's about four hour drive. I think it's like 200 miles. So now with that being said, this video and the next video that I'll film down at the low country of South Carolina is sponsored by Progressive. So here in South Carolina, you don't necessarily have to have boaters insurance, but I think it's a good idea to carry, to carry boat insurance. There's a lot of risk involved in not having boat insurance in the event that Another boater runs into me in the event that something happens and God forbid I run into another uh, boater. Lawsuits, if something like that happens to me, Progressive has got my back. So no matter what time of day or night that you have an accident or you need to report an accident, Progressive will be there to take care of you with 24 seven claims reps that are available to you. You can even receive a lot of benefits if you decide to bundle your policy. So put that home, put your truck, put your boat, all three on the same policy and you'll get a lot of added benefits. I'll put a link in the description box if you guys decide that you wanna become insured by Progressive. All right, so that's the easy part. Now we gotta go do the hard part, where we're gonna fish. Let's go check out the map and find some cool places to go. Looking at an aerial map, you can see where all the humps and you can look at various tides and know where you can and can't run so you don't have to call Progressive and say, hey dude, I locked, knocked my lower unit off. Can you come get me? That's what the aerial is about. Let's go check out Google Earth. All right, this is the area of the coastal region of South Carolina we're gonna be fishing. You see there's a little river right here that comes in. I guess you would call it a creek. And then there's another creek right here that we'll fish. This will take all day, but the areas I'm looking for are like these right here, the little flats. I'm also looking for, let's zoom in, these little turns, docks and turns. This makes it feel a lot like bass fishing. Docks and turns always produce fish and it always helps when you have a dock and a turn like this with a little creek connected to it. If I have a dock and a turn, that's a plus. If I have a dock with a little creek, like what you see right here, pretty in close proximity, that always makes it a high percentage area because the fish go in the creeks, they come back out on the, on the docks in low tide and then they go back in the creek on high tide so let's scroll around here and look around uh, there's another dock in a turn that's a high percentage area but you see the creek that's right beside it that makes that dock a high percentage area and if you look around there's a little pothole within the creek so at low tide those fish can stay right there too so I like this place we're definitely gonna fish this one Coming in. 
pull out the back of the creeks. Ain't not a single one of them suckers measured. He'll make a measure either. He's 15 inches. He just said it wasn't working. Got him. On that corner. That's good. 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 People say anything. They hit it, they just wrong side. All right, now this area right here is super important. You can see this is the main river right here. Now let me zoom in, I'll show you. There's a dock right here, close proximity to the ocean. I like to fish places like this on incoming tide. It's going to have a heavy current in this area right here. So those fish and the bait is always going to wash to that dock. Now let's scroll back in the creek. You can see this is a flat. All right, this is a hot spot. That's an oyster bar right there. Definitely a spot that I want to fish right there is an oyster bar on a flat connected to a creek. So those fish should come and congregate on low tide at this little oyster bar. And then they'll go back in this creek when the tide comes back up. That's definitely a place I want to fish right there for sure. I don't know how shallow it's going to be right here. You see that, them three posts just out of the water, them the ones that's usually good. Yeah, it's coming up fast. Just see if we can get back there. You might not be able to, but if we can, you still want to try to get back there. The tide's still way out. The water's coming this way on incoming. You just sit here on this side and you just, they come through and I can hold us on this pole right here once you get it. I think you got it. Yeah, you got it. Trout. Trout. Wait, look, you see? Yeah. Hey, let me, I need to grab something because you don't want to get too close and then you're going to spook because it's so shallow. Because you don't, you don't want them to hear all of that right there. Anything to keep us from holding, running the trolling motor real fast is probably the best. It might turn sideways. I think the back end gonna kick around, but it, it don't matter. It, as long as we ain't going back up in there. That's all you want. Hey, look at this. You got it? Yeah. Damn it. Okay, so. Come out like a I can't believe it come out. Um, They've been little all everywhere. I thought we just had a small area. Oh, he got off. He threw it in there and he took him. He threw it in there and he took him. He gonna take you to them pilots, ain't he? That's the... He might measure. Yeah, yeah, I think that one's fine. This is the first time I caught him here since that day. <laughs> what is that? A big one? Yes, yeah, yeah, it's a fish. I just don't know how big he is. Yeah, it is a fish. Oh, it's a flounder. That's a keeper. That's a keeper flounder. Oh my God, that's a keeper flounder. That's a big one. That's a big flounder. We got it. I'm going to get the net out on that. I want to eat that sucker. You don't eat him, I'm going to eat him. That's a big flounder. Oh my God, that's a big flounder. <laughs> that's a big flounder. <laughs> look, at, look, he's been ate by the dolphin tried to get him. Whoa, daddy, that's a big one. <laughs> God dang. Dude, that thing is huge. Jerry rest right up beside it. I just want to make a couple casts now. I think we ought to go to the next spot. I don't think so. I don't know what you do if you had a good one because you can't doggone turn the doggone little ones. You can't even turn them. Yeah. You can't even turn that size. You hit him and it feel like you hung. This area that we're stopping at this time is a little bit different than the areas we fished before. You can see this is sort of like a sand flat behind those little small island. 
Now, what's important about this place is these fish have a lot going on here. There's a sand flat that they obviously can use, but there's a docks. There's docks here that they can kind of transition from the flat to the docks on low tide back to the flats when the tide comes back in. So it's just a hot spot. It's a lot of stuff that these fish can use. Let's just see if it's muddy. If it ain't muddy, fish it. But if it's muddy, you might as well go home. Might be dirty. You can just try it five, ten minutes. Right behind that boat, so what's good? That's that bread. Love to do. We love to play. Just make a quick drift. I wouldn't spend a bunch of time right here, but they can be right here. There he is. Yeah. Should be a trap that time. Flounder. Holy crap. Another flounder. Dang. It's flounder today. Uh, they're both on one side, I think. Or maybe they do. This is a good little spot because they can go right in the grass and then the shells too. fish we had today. Good trout too, boy. Trout bigger than the dog on redfish. Woo! God, oh, that's a good. Big up opening the live well back up, baby. <laughs> why you why you open the live well so quick? <laughs> that's a big in there, dude. fun so you can see if you put a little bit of extra work in doing some map study on the internet with google earth whatever map system that you want to use it can save you a lot of headache and you'll catch more fish it was a lot of bad weather out there fishing really wasn't as good as it can be but the fact that we did a little bit of extra map study before we actually got to the lake i knew the places that were going to be exposed to the wind i knew where some of those shell bars were even on high tide because i looked at aerial images at low tide so i could see some of those little hot spots and the number one reason is looking at aerial maps you can see underwater obstructions and save yourself from having to make an insurance claim 
Progressive can get you guys boats insured for as little. You can get limited liability for as little as $100 per policy. Of course, you can get full comprehensive policies and cover your entire boat from stern to bows. I've had a lot of fun shooting these things. My deal is salt water fishing. I love it. I lose sleep over it. I think about it every day. So this is one of the tools that I use to navigate unfamiliar water and have a good time at the same time. I can't wait to do it again.